and our first story there, one constituency, one million dollar campaign by the new patriotic party during the 2016 electioneering was one that caught on with the electorate. Well, uh, whether or not government will succeed in implementing the policy uh, now that it has the mandate is a subject for debate. And at a forum to discuss its feasibility at Bogatanga in the Upper East Region, stakeholders seem to have divergent views on the matter. We we'll bring you uh, correspondent Albert Sorry's report. The forum was attended by chiefs and political leaders, heads of departments, religious leaders, civil society organizations, and members of the public. Four experts in different fields discussed whether government's $1 million per constituency policy was practical and what needed to be done to ensure its success. For a development economist, the policy is contrary to demands of the Sustainable Development Goals. The crux of my argument is that even the Sustainable Development Goals, goal number 10, says we have to work, work towards bridging inequality and work to make markets more inclusive. This $1 million per constituency uh, policy, let me call it, if may not agree a policy, is anti-SDG. You cannot think that all the constituencies across this country have equal problems. So you can give everybody $1 million. Local governance expert Isaka Amonkote described the policy as laudable, but maintained that the country does not have the capital nor the political commitment to implement it. We were again sitting out somewhere when we introduced Get Fund to manage our education, isn't it? Now, Oh, oh, ha, have we solved the problem? So why are we so excited that there is one million one dollar coming and all our problems will be resolved? Why? However, for the former Pro Vice Chancellor of the University for Development Studies, Professor David Miller, the huge amount of money government has spent paying off judgment debts over the years is an indication that the government is capable of providing at least one million dollars to each constituency. We are demanding development as our own right. Whether it bridges a gap or not, we are demanding as a right. That's correct. What you are saying with your gap concept is that, oh, once the gaps are bridged, it's okay. We are saying no. We want to pass that gap and go beyond. And we can. You see? So let's not be mediocre about say, oh, the South is uh, 30, 54 districts, so 54, we 13, and so on and so forth. We are not competing with the South. There's no hegemony. There's no quarrel between us and the South. We are demanding development for the North on its own right. Whether there's a gap or there's no gap, we don't care. We are demanding. Civil society advocate Bismarck Ayorogo also pointed out that by capturing the policy in the budget statement, the government has shown its commitment. One million US dollars per constituency will be allocated to the 275 constituencies in this country to implement the IPEC infrastructure for poverty eradication. And we see this in the budget statement. It's something that we should be excited because we are moving beyond social contract to a legal contract. Meanwhile, the National Coordinator of the One District, One Factory Initiative, Gifte Ohini Kunedu, has revealed that the delay in implementing the initiative, originally scheduled to have taken off last June, is as a result of the partnership with the Chinese government and the procedures of getting the right frame of work. Well, speaking at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center Academic Alumni Day and Homecoming, the minister said the country must assess the deal and align it with the country's framework. Speaking on the theme, negotiation between theory and practice, National Coordinator of the One District, One Factory, Gifty Ohinukunedu, noted that paperwork for the implementation of the policy is ready, but the country must take a critical look at its framework. She also identified Ghana's partnership with the Chinese government as a cause of delay of the implementing of the policy. We have to get the framework right, because if you don't get the framework right, you will be haphazard. But if you have the correct framework, 
then everything becomes smooth. So that is why I haven't started. I didn't start in June as I promised. And I also told her that recently this partnership with China also came in. And you need to align that one with the broad policy that you have. This whole thing is a private sector-led initiative. Communications Minister Ursula Owusu is worried about the increasing rate of cyber activities. Speaking on the issue, the minister says the cyber environment is increasingly becoming a fertile ground for criminality, hence the need to train law enforcement agencies and judicial officers in application of the law. She also outlined measures the ministry and government have put in place to ensure the menace is addressed. We intend to even scale up the digitization of our economy. The national ID system will be in place by the end of this year. We're having a digital property address system. We're linking all the databases to help ASP, Fiat Tenge, and others stop arresting people to determine whether they have the correct documents for their vehicles or not. And we're providing them, we will provide them with the uh, technology to be able to, at the click of a button, as is done elsewhere, type in the car registration or motor vehicle motor vehicle uh, motor registration number into their database and see instantly whether it is properly registered or not whether they've done the insurance they've got their roadworthy and they're properly licensed or not now on your cause report for joy news the opposition national democratic congress says it will resist any attempt by elements within the governing new patriotic party, including the president, to remove the electoral commission chairperson in Charlotte Osei from office. The party on Thursday presented what he says is an assessment of the six months tenure of the Kufado led government, describing it as a period marked by incompetence, lawlessness, and corruption, all supervised by an absentee president. The party's chairman, Kofi Potofi, accused the president of failing to ensure that the security of citizens uh, were assured and also blamed him for recent attacks on some security personnel. A political party in the shape of the MPP has incorporated militancy and violent extremism into its way of operations. To give meaning to militancy and violence, a group of brigands and outright criminals have been assembled and given such blood clotting names as invisible forces, Delta forces, Kandahar boys, Volta crocodiles, <laughs> and also giving official covering from the seat of government to perpetuate their illegal existence. These criminal gangs have been allowed to wage a psychological war on the security apparatus by attacking and openly killing policemen in uniform. Very credible intelligence information reaching us has it that a lot of the armed robbery and killing of our hard working police officers is being done by some elements belonging to the aforementioned militant goons, squads associated with the MPP. Per the information we are getting, these criminals are very much aware that they have full government backing and that in the event that they are even arrested by the police, they will be released by their political godfathers. Meanwhile, the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, also accused the president of being behind the petition from the staff of the Electoral Commission seeking to remove their boss. Our message to President Anansi Sampa is that you should stay off intruding into the operations and activities of the Independent Electoral Commission of Ghana. While we have accommodated him, sweeping up the civil and public service and replacing them with officials of the new patriotic party, we are unable to accept and live with, we live with any attempt by him to erode public confidence in the independent constitutional body of the Electoral Commission. Therefore, his efforts and quest as blackmail witch hunt will fail today, fail tomorrow, for the Therefore, we can interfere into the operations of 
the civil and public service are here, for instance, the National Labor Commission, uh, the head of it has been asked to go home. What the president has forgotten is that he's more to uphold the laws of Ghana. He's not the sole appointer of the National Labor Commission and his chief executive, as by law established. The Chief Executive of National Vocational Training Institute has been asked to proceed on leave, having worked for the state and surpassed every other administration, including the combined NCC and MPP administration. As I speak to you, we will share with you in more detail, even at the Ministry of Finance, as many as eight civil service positions have been filled by officers who either were working with the Minister of Finance at Data Bank and have been put on the payroll, payroll of the Ghana Revenue Authority. We will not accept the undue politicization of the civil and public service of Ghana. But even that is tolerable. We will not and we will resist in all full force the attempt at blackmail which is hand directed at the Electoral Commission of Ghana. What President Abu Fuadu must remember with his MPP is that the, the same Electoral Commissioner in whom today they have doubt declared him president of the party. And therefore, you should know that when the sovereign will and the voices of the people speak, we we'll walk him quietly out on the basis of the sovereign party. So we will not, and Chairman, if you permit me, as for a good football team, is a good football team. If you have a Brazil, Ghana, or a German, uh, Ghana, Black Stars, and you are weak, no military can save you in that particular instance. <laughs> Therefore, if he thinks that getting control of the delivery of our elections is an important thing to do, we are reminding him that he should not extend his encroachment and political polarization of the public interest <laughs> to the electoral commission of Ghana. And if I were calling on the development partners and donors who are concerned about our democracy and good governance to call the president to <laughs> Chairman of the National Peace Council, the most reverend Emmanuel Asante, has stated that the impeachment saga of the Electoral Commission Chairperson Charlotte Ose must be handled prudently. Speaking to Join News, Beatrice Edu, the Reverend Asante says the issue may dent the national image and also affect Ghana's democratic credentials. He suggests arbitration should rather be a means of solving the problem. As far as I'm concerned, I have had the privilege to read what they have written and what she has also written in defense. I will caution that for the good of this country, we need an electoral commission that is united. Therefore, whatever the problems are, we must find ways and means of addressing these kinds of issues. At the moment, I wouldn't say that uh, if it is possible for them to use arbitration to address this internal problem that they might have, the better. But from what I have read from the electoral, the chairman, um, she believes that, you know, um, there is an element of, you know, um, people accusing her of something that she hasn't done. And therefore, she wants to seek redress from the courts because they have also written to, a, um, to the president and all that. I would think that the authorities that be will use their good offices to put in place an arbitration thing to sit and listen to both sides and try to find ways and means of, you know, bringing peace to this very important institution that is there for the promotion of our democracy. Do you think the back and forth has the potential of destabilizing or disorganizing this electoral commission or the system? Yeah, but if the very people who are responsible for um, this important aspect of Ghanaian democracy are uh, at loggerheads and there is tension, then you know that it's going to, it will have a wider implication. And that's the reason why I'm saying that as with dispatch, um, it will be very, very important for the issues to be addressed, you know, not antagonistically, 
but for people to sit in Georgia and see, you know, how they can truly address the issue. Well, we'll bring you a lot more updates on this as we discuss this thoroughly on our platforms as well. But racism around the world is a big problem. But in Germany, it is a biting problem. Uh, and according to the report, two joint news journalists, Fifi Kumsin and Rasta Sassari Donko, they've been in the country of Germany to learn about how the German government is integrating refugees from war torn countries around the world into their society. And there's, however, worry about how deep seated racism could derail that effort. Fifi Kumsin spoke to uh, Jane Pragas, the woman leading a campaign against discrimination against people of color in Germany. From hair color to skin color, the elements of racism are many. From the moment I get up and leave the house in the morning, I'm confronted with racist views, images, and stereotypes of black people. In the Hamburg-born Jana Perigis, with German, Swedish, and Zimbabwean roots, has for many years been a victim of it. As a child, I always wanted to have white skin because I felt bad being black and not being able to blend in and always kind of sticking out of the group and being, you know, different than the rest. I didn't want to be different. I am Jana Paragus's childhood experiences spread her on to do a documentary dubbed afro Dutchland, featuring black people who shared painful experiences at the hands of racist Germans. Many of these extremists would have wished no black person lived in the country. Like this refugee from Burkina Faso, Isabara. He was attacked, in fact, beaten by a far-right German for this reason, being black. I went into the store and saw a man with a woman and child. And he said, look at that, using the N-word, look at this black piece of trash. I didn't say anything. I went to the counter to pay, and he went like this. I said, what do you want from me? And he says, I'll show you. I went over there, and he hit me three or four times, like this. I felt a lot of pain in my stomach, and I coughed up blood for about a month. Jana and many other blacks in Germany hope to change the state of affairs to create a more integrated and acceptably diverse German society. I'm optimistic, um, optimistic that things will change because society has become more and more diverse because people there's a worldwide movement of people going to different countries, right? We have globalization, but um, that's nothing that will come easily and you have to fight for it and if you work for it. The present German government, led by Angela Merkel, is a largely conservative one that wants to root out the problem and in a world where it's difficult to find a literally black person or a typical paper white human being, there is little sense in why racism must fester based on a black and white human categorization. Fifi Kumsen, Cologne, Germany. Well, interesting there, if you ask me. But uh, Erasta Sassari Donko and uh, Fifi Kumsen, they went to Germany and, and have been bringing us a lot more stories about the German, German society. We hope that you can learn some lessons there. But that'll be it for the latest news update we have. We have a lot more. We'll have to go to the newspapers and look at a couple of the stories we have on the front pages. And then we'll look at what stories have been shared on the various online portals. Of course, we have to go to our own myjoinline.com. But uh, throughout the show, you can get interactive. On, on Facebook, we have a page that we stream there live. Join us on TV is the name of the page. We also have our interactive handle on Twitter. I join us on TV. And then my Online TV is a YouTube channel where you can also watch us live there. Uh, we'll be grateful so much for those comments on WhatsApp as well. We're taking a break. When we come back, I'll be joined by sweet Mama View also Wajik. She's looking elegant this morning, uh, as you've already witnessed. And um, we're going to look at the various newspapers as well. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.